try and keep this brief, but I doubt if it will be, because I've, um, over the last three or four weeks, I've recorded stuff, and it's gone on too long, and it's just too much for the edit. Um, so I'm going to try and keep it to the point, and brief, like I say, um, to sort of give you an update as to where I am at the moment, because um, I haven't been on for about seven months, have I? <coughs> so at the moment I'm just coming out towards um, Junction 13 uh, on the M6. I'm just starting itself. And, uh, yeah, so um, regarding the job, well, I think the job has gone to pot totally. down to Brexit and Covid and all that, people's mindsets, but the actual driving standards, not only from car drivers, which you would expect to be pretty dodgy because they're only amateurs, but so-called professional drivers, the standard of driving has is, is absolutely gone diabolical lately. The abuse you get, the, the elephant racing, which is a common thing now, and if you don't know what elephant racing is, that's when nobody will let you pass or you're just getting past them and then uh, they start creeping up the inside and they creep up the inside and you look round to them and just sort of look just in amazement to sort of think, what? And then through no fault of my own or anybody's own that's on the outside, normally, you receive a lot of abuse from these people and the lack of indicating and the lack of just let general lack of professionalism in this job has just gone down the pan and it's it's sad because you know, I've been at it 42 years now and I yeah you know, a lot of people might have a dig at me but I pride myself in being professional I've had a lot of practice at it and you never know at all you're always learning and it's not only young lads now that have got their licenses that are doing all this, it's people that should know better that, that are sort of in their 50s and 60s and and they just won't let you overtake. I don't know what this thing is, this trend is now with not letting, wanting people to overtake. People won't flash you in. You flash people in, they don't acknowledge. I, I really don't understand it. Yeah, when I was a lad I used to go with my uncle. Oh, that's another thing. Um, Anyway, I'll talk about this first. Let's go with my uncle. So, you know, I was brought into trucking at an early age, I think about 10, 11, 12. Used to go out with my uncle on his truck in the school holidays and learn a little bit about it. You learn what the drivers do, you know, all that flashing in and all that was a good thing to do. You know, if you want a proper trucker, flash this guy in and that and that, you know, and be kind to each other. Um, and I now think that that has, in this day and age now, has got a lot to do with the driver shortage, because how often do you see a kid in a truck? Back in the day, you used to be able to go with your dad or with your uncle or with whoever, when you're a lad in, in, on your holidays, and go out in the truck and experience it all. Now, you don't get that young generation in trucks which think, oh, that's what I want to do when I grow up. So that's cutting out drivers from that very early age, which is sad really, you know, a lot of nippers, a lot of people my age did that with their families, but basically truck driving's gone down the pan, you get no respect from anybody, even fellow drivers, it's just diabolical, they'd rather run you off the road, you know, and car drivers, that goes without saying, you know, they all want us during lockdown and bringing their stuff, but I think they all just thought magically it appeared in the shops. They didn't realise that people like us were bringing their goods so they could live for six months in lockdown. Well, longer than that, wasn't it? But, you know, people were on furlough. You know, I had furlough. So anyway, that's, that's it. The job's gone down the pan. That's my view on why there's a lack of drivers as well because of the respect and the nippers not going out with their, their, their family members learning about it. And basically, 
play is rubbish you know, for the hours you've got to do and the stress that's involved. I can't see why anybody want to do this job now, to tell you the truth. I love it. I've loved it. 42 years in the job and um, I, you know, as a whole it's been a good job. Anyway, I'm not going to rant on and on and on about that. Um, I'm going to keep it short. So, um, we get down the road a little bit more and I'll come back in a minute. As far as the job goes, I think you all gathered from the last video that I wasn't quite happy. In, but that was seven months ago, I think, somewhere around that, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, once I got took out of my um, little truck, the job's never been the same. You know, I'm in that new one, I didn't like that. And now I'm in an 18 plate, um, Generation 2 MAN, which is, I think it's far better drive than the uh, Generation 3s that are out now, brand new ones. But saying that, the, the, my job isn't what it was. You know, the good years have gone, you know, the fun times have gone. I would say the first four or five years on this job was phenomenal. The places I've been allowed, not allowed, places I've gone to, you know, the opportunities I've had, the people I've been able to meet, I've met a few stars, I'm not going to start, start name dropping, but there's not a lot of driving jobs where you you meet people like that and go to fantastic places all around Europe. Um, you know, and I'd like to thank my company for the opportunity for doing that, and, it, and when, I, when I first started, it was... Um, quite a family company you know, we were all we, we all felt well I felt and I've spoken to a few other people that are still here from them days that we were valued and, the fa and our families seemed to be valued and included as well you know they were interested but that's sadly not the case now you know, and so the good years have gone and I suppose it started going downhill about years ago you know, the work started to change and the manager we had then he um, he left um, and that, they were the best years actually when Rob was running it we had some great times Angie was allowed to come with me there was no argument about going on boats and having berths on boats in our cabins and it was just accepted that you know family members could come with us uh, even Ralph, our German owner, you know, you felt like you were part of his family as well. Whenever he came over, he used to give us a big party at Christmas, and he, him and his family used to come over and thank us for all we've done. And it used to be fantastic back in them days. You know, you really felt like you were part of a family and a team. Well, it wasn't really that team thing. It was just a family. It was, it was really great, but. You know, since Rob finished, it's gradually changed, and um, it really isn't very good. And if I don't think Rob would watch this, but if he does watch it, I really thank you, Rob. They were the best years that me and Angie had on this. And since she retired, she was able to come with me and enjoy some of what I've been doing since I started here. You know, traveling all around Spain, Italy, Finland, Sweden. The Nordics in the winter at minus 34, and you might think that's awful, but going to Finland in the winter isn't like driving in the UK in the winter. You know, they're obviously all geared up for it, and um, although it's bitter cold, it's a different cold out there, and it's a different snow. And you can drive, you look back at my vlogs, you can see how we're able to drive. As long as you take things sensible, you can drive at your, your limited speed, you know. And um, people are more careful out there. Car drivers give you respect because if they didn't, on sheet ice and snow, they'd be dead. So they've got to give you respect. But basically, this job is just just a job now, really. You know, I'm running backwards and forwards up to Cheshire four times a week. Um, but this is the lesser of two evils really because I'd rather do this than go through all the aggro that our guys are going through now with Brexit 
and all the customs paperwork and sitting around for hours getting clearance and and all that I couldn't be doing with it you know, we used to just go over on the boat or the train straight out and do our deliveries and very rarely would we get pulled by customs but, um, yeah, I, I, although this is a mundane job at least I know where I am all the time I know where I can stop I know what I'm going to do and basically I earn similar money than if I was going over the water with all that aggro right so we're a mile off Stafford Services I'm going to um, I'm going to nip in there and uh, that's one of our humans going the other way um, yeah I'm going to nip in there and um, see if I can get the truck washed because it ain't been washed for weeks I've washed the unit off but I can't be doing washing a 40 foot trailer I just I haven't got the interest or not I just can't do it now you know, I was 67 last month well I'm fit and as healthy as you can expect at my age I just can't do it so I'm going to go in here and um, see if someone else will do it for me and they're pretty good in here I stick the old acid on the wheels and on the tanks and everything and it uh, brings it up really nice and shiny it? it's about, about 40 quid or something but since it hasn't been washed for a couple of months or more maybe 40 quid's nothing really is it to have a, a truck cleaned and they only take about 15-20 minutes so. but if it's a massive queue I'm not going to hang about we'll just nip in here and have a look now yeah, I'm not as um, fussy about this truck as I used to with my little truck I used to treat that like my own and that used to have to be immaculate all the time but that's just sitting in the corner of the yard um, growing roots it doesn't do much at all these days it, um, I can't see the back of a queue but the last time I came in here their um, their brush system was broken um, so I didn't uh, I didn't bother so hopefully they've got that fixed. So there's a back of the truck here, so um, it's only take 15 minutes of time, maybe. Um, let's have a look, and see, because I've, I've got to get this washed. This is, uh, uh, there's only two in front of me. One's one's got pallets on, so he ain't gonna have the thing um, trailer washed, is he? So let's get ourselves tucked in here out of the way. And um, it looks like a brush is. Um, working again right um, yeah so it looks like we can get it truck washed this is all they do here a couple of guys goes around with a lance and then he brings the brush around this is a bit of a funny old way of doing it that's all he does is bring the brush around on this motorized thing on a trolley and just brushes it off but it does a good job they do a good job here it only takes them about 15 minutes um, saves me doing it doesn't it for a bloody hour or whatever and then he'd go around with the lance and just blast it all off his mates around the other side yeah, that's pretty good and so if, they, if you want acid on the tank and the wheels to bring them up a bit more they'll, they'll chuck that on which helps which I will have so there you go Put acid on mate, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Do I pay now or when you're done? Right mate. Do you want me to pay now or when you're done? Yeah, it's going there for now. Yeah. Alright mate. <coughs> God, I've just got out to pay and the acid they're putting on the wheels to get the all the brake dust off. Oh, God, it makes you choke. Got like strong old stuff. <coughs> it's wonder they're not choking, they bloody breathe it in all day. <coughs> oh dear. Here we go. It works though. <laughs> well, it looked right the last time they did it. <coughs> right, that's that done. Nice clean 
truck hopefully. Well, I'm not going to stop and look at it, I'm just going to crack on. Just been talking to my mate uh, Gary, he's just had his break on the toll road. So he's going to be ahead of me. And um, I may um, have to stop at Chowell Valley because um, Costa. Costa Moto were giving away free Costas to truck drivers today. It's not often you get something from nothing in this job. A little bit of thanks. Um, but it's out of the um, Costa Express machines, so I might, I might just um, drop in there and have one of them. So uh, I've had, I've had a 20-minute break. I've just had a Greg's up at, uh, on the Nantwich Bypass. Um, so I've had the first bit of break there. I will, um, I won't get much further than Chowell Valley, I don't think, so I think I'll stop in there and have half hour and grab a free coffee. But there's no limit on it, is there? They don't know how many you've had in a day. And all you do is, when you go in there, you just say you're a truck driver. And anybody could go in there, unless you're dressed in a suit and tie. But anybody could go in there if they looked a bit like a truck driver, couldn't they, and get a free coffee. I'm sure there's some chances that do that. Well, I'm glad I've got this done. Because uh, I'm off tomorrow, um, and if it don't rain today, it looks a bit dodgy up there, doesn't it? But if it don't rain today, it'll be nice and clean for when I come in Monday. Um, That's another thing, see, when you pull out onto the motorway, it's not so bad here now because, um, I'll straighten that up a little bit. It's not so bad here because there's no traffic. I'm not sort of going into any traffic. But if I, if I join the motorway and everybody's sort of moving around or slowing down or speeding up to let me out, I will, um, I, I won't go flat out. I will just ease off until the dust settled, until everybody's got back to what they were doing before and that and then once everybody's settled down and the dust has settled I can then think well I can overtake this bloke and go in the middle lane get out there blah blah but you see a lot of blokes that come flying down the slip road straight out flat out and then you're left stranded now they won't ease off and let everybody get sorted out they just do the elephant bloody racing again they just they just oh, I, I just can't get this round it, I'll tell you. The mentality of drivers, professional drivers these days. Oh. And I see something the other day, um, obviously I won't name names, because if I'm having a go at people, I, I don't name names, it's, just, you know, it's bullying, isn't it? I see somebody on YouTube ripping right into another driver, you know, I'm blaming him for bullying, and then it just looked like he was bullying back it just uh, I just don't understand what drivers if I disagree with something I won't go back on someone else's channel or on their Twitter and blatantly have a go at them and all that I just it's not worth even commenting why bother why bother getting into an argument I don't know I just, I just don't understand it right uh, going to, um, in a couple of minutes, go into Chowell Valley and get my free coffee from Costa, um, just courtesy of Moto, apparently for everybody delivering during the fuel crisis. It wasn't a fuel crisis at all, it was a brain cell crisis, that's what ever always happens here. Lack of brain cells. That's when there's ever any ever blooming crisis in the UK. It's like when there was a toilet roll crisis on lockdown. No, it was a brain cell crisis. Yeah, that's what it is. So hopefully um, they won't be run out. Hopefully, not a lot of people know about it. soon find out and then I'll tell you about the next bit of my life which is going to change a little bit later on 
we'll get round this Ujima flip, round this roundabout, and we'll nip in there. Oh, it's unusual you can go straight out on here. Very, very rare. And, um, I don't like going, I really don't like the Cherwell Valley. It's just, the lorry park is a mess all round the the, the, I know the shrubbery don't really mean much, but all around the edges, they don't keep the garden clean, they the, the shrubbery clean, all around the edges is all filth and muck, and the bushes are never trimmed back. It just looks like a disgusting mess here. But if they're offering me a free coffee, I will go in and take them up on that offer. It's like I said earlier, you very rarely get anything for free in this job. Normally you're paying through the nose. It's only coach drivers and people like that that get stuff for free and services. Because they bring all their passengers in that pay money. You know, it doesn't matter that we pay 30 odd quid a night to park in these blooming places. They don't, don't give us any rewards for doing that. So I wonder how busy this is in here. Sky looks a bit dodgy, look, you know why that is, don't you? Because I've washed me truck. Right. Oh, looks like bloody chaos in here as usual. Mm. Yeah, you go in there, mate. I'll squeeze. I'm not going to squeeze in there. I'll go up a little bit further where it's a little bit easier. Look at that, blooming smashing. Right, that's that then. I will see you in a mit, mit, in a mit, in a minute when I get my coffee. Ah, done well here. Look, so I got a free cost of coffee from um, Moto, which they're giving to truck drivers today. That's good, and a free. Belgian bun from Greg's because that was my birthday treat from last month which I hadn't claimed so mm. so freebies all round what a nice lunch that is mmm right then off we go now we're refreshed again nice little freebie lunch there look courtesy of Moto Right, so we should be back in the yard by about three o'clock. So then we, we oh, stop saying that we, because you're not with me, and I've got no one else here with me, have I? See, look at the state of this site here. Look, they never, never trim back the bushes. Look, look at the filth all over here, all along the side here. Look to the left. Look, bottles of pee coffee cups, pee, rubbish, look at the state of the place, look to the right, look at the disgusting mess. Now you've got this clown here, look, blocking the bloody place up. Now I can't go over curbs with these little tyres, because otherwise you get problems. I wouldn't even bother queuing up here, because even when there's not a queue for this wash, you can be here nearly a bloody hour. It's not like the place I've just been. That bloke's going to be there ages. But can you see what I mean coming around that bend? The mess, the disgusting place, it's a disgusting sight. Moto, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You charge us over 30 pound a night to park here, and you don't even go, you've got nobody go around cleaning the site, it's disgusting. All right, it's all down to these people throwing the rubbish out. But you've got a responsibility to keep the bloody place clean. What are you doing for your money? You don't give us any security or anything like that. The place is just a mess. Look at it round here, look. Look, bottles of pee, rubbish cups, look, all sorts of crap down there. Look, just stuff that's been here for months. Look, coffee cups in the bushes, Greg's cup last night, it's a bottle of water chucked in the bush. That's not just happened this morning, that's been going on and on and on. They never clean their site up. 
Oh, come on, car person. That's alright, I'll sit here all day waiting for you. Um, right then, the next thing is... Um, thinking about retiring, basically. Because I've had enough of all this and that and everything else. It's just getting on top of me. But the thing is, this tells me and everybody else that I'll be retiring. My body tells me that I'm retiring. Angie tells me I'm retiring. But it's this that I need to convince. This needs to convince everything else that that's the way I'm going to go. So, um, I'll be in here. Um, about three or four weeks ago, maybe a bit longer, we went up to um, a place called Brown Hills Camper Vans at uh, Newark on Trent and uh, had a look around and we've purchased a brand spanking new camper van which is due to be with us in the early part of January. Uh, not a motor home, a camper van because a motor home is just too big and gawky. If we can live in a 15 tonne for three weeks, four weeks touring around Europe I'm sure we can live in a camper van because that'd be like luxury. I'm done with tank tracking. One, two, three. Uh, that, that. One, two, three. So I'm just updating the tank track because I'm old school still. See. Um, yeah. So a camper van would be like luxury to us, but I've got to convince this. That's what I'm going to be doing from next year. Um, it's a shock to the system that maybe that will be the end of my 42 year career on the road and there won't be a monthly wage coming in but you can't go on forever can you you know you never know what's around the corner and Angie's at home on her own now because of all what's happened they're not being allowed to come on me because of what's happened and nothing of her own fault so she's stuck at home all the time on her own you come in mate um, so she's bored I'm, I'm away all week still so I don't know um, but saying that uh, I could have retired September not this September just gone but September last year so um, yeah, this is what we do properly to be professional Look, we just knock it back a little bit let this go guy go by even though he might not be the type that does ease up to let people go by I will let him go by because I don't like elephant racing. So it doesn't hurt me to just knock it back for a little bit. And then um, give him the headlights, flash him in. Yes, I flash you, mate. And I flash you again. Has he seen me this time? Is he going to say thank you? Uh, no, he's not. Indicating to come in isn't saying thank you. So there you go, look, I've, I've done two things. I've eased off to let him in, which I would have noticed if I was overtaken at some, I thought, well, he's, he's a gentleman, and I've flashed him in twice. Not a dicky bird. So anyway, that's that. But getting back to the camper van. Yeah, so it's due to come um, in the first week of uh, January. Hopefully we'll be able to fund it for the rest of our lives, because we'll only be on pensions um, and savings. We've been watching recently quite a few van lifers, and in particularly um, Mandy and John. They're they're travelling around Europe at the moment. They're on an epic trip in their motorhome, and they've um, you know obviously been through France and Belgium, and they're end up heading up through Denmark and Sweden and Finland. They're on the way up to Norway now. I think they will be in Norway now because we haven't seen that vlog, and then they're going to knock. They'd be Norway and then down in through Finland. Sorry, I'm getting a bit confused. And then I think they're going to come and start down maybe Germany. They're just going to do the, the round robin all around Europe. But I've just looked at their first months. They've just posted it on their community on YouTube. And their first month's expenses was over three grand. Um, I can't look at the moment. Obviously, I'm driving. But the fuel bill was quite expensive. But I'm sure we can do it cheaper than that. So, um, yeah, it's been that's very interesting. And plus, no, we've got a brand new van. 
we're going to do a trip around the UK to get used to it and there's a lot of places in the UK we haven't seen in our lives because wherever I've, I've been normally it's always been in a truck and just working you know a lot there's, there's um, some vloggers have been around you know these van lifers have been to some lovely places in the UK so um, we're going to give that a shot for us to get used to the van and see what we need in it and uh, hopefully sort of maybe towards the end of next year venture off out into Europe um, at least do one trip around Europe because um, we do miss going over there it's just a shame that we're not doing it in the truck anymore but with all the paperwork and the bureaucracy through Brexit and stuff, oh, I just couldn't hack it. And that's why I'm doing this mundane job, Monday to Friday. But, so it's earned me a living. You know, from I could have retired last September, and uh, that money that I've earned uh, from last September till now, which is um, October, has paid for the camper van. So at least I've got something out of working for that extra year. Um, so that's why I'm looking at it. But I've got to convince my head that that's what I, I want to do. Um, well, I do want to do. I know I do, but I've just got to do it. I haven't made it official yet. I suppose this makes it a little bit official, but until I actually tell the powers to be that that's it, it's not it until I tell them. So we'll see. Right, so it's now down to um, just coming off the 40. We're just coming. We, we, me and him perhaps. We're all just coming down to the junction with the A34. And you can wander back, mate. Um, Junction 9, so we're down all the way down to 34, look down to Winchester, uh, across the, on the A31, and across the 272 to Petersfield. Because I don't go down on the on the motorway because it's roadworks and I can't stand on the din lows through the roadworks, hog in the middle lane. But oh, this is nice and quiet, look. Blimey. Yeah, green light. Yeah, so that's where we are at the moment. That's um my life in a nutshell. I've been doing this for the last seven months. I'll say it ain't a bad little job but compared to what we have had the first few years on here it's a bit mundane. It's, I suppose this type of job is what a lot of drivers do. Um, oh just one more thing talking about drivers and driver shortage. I suspect a lot of you have seen on social media that um, police forces and that are having a big crackdown on um, Secure, securement straps, ratchet straps, and I think they're being just a little bit petty. Um, there was a driver, I don't know, I can't remember what he had secured, but there were some tiny little marks on his strap, and they said that they weren't safe. I just don't understand it. it every, every strap is going to get a tiny little fray mark on it. it, it's just the nature of the job. But, they would come down hard on him, they made him put loads more straps on the load, they didn't make him take the straps off if they were on there. <coughs> so if they were illegal and they were gonna break, why didn't they say you can't take you can't go with them trap them straps on? But they made him put loads and loads of other straps on, it's ridiculous. And he's now um, got a summons to go to court. So why anybody in their right mind would want to come to this into this industry and be picked on left, right, and centre? Right, some people deserve to be picked on, but those of us who keep a clean slate and try and do the best job we can and be professional for all our years in the job. Yeah, I could get stopped. He could, they could pick me up on a strap that's fray. I've got old straps holding my load on. But they're never going to break. It just seems in this day and age when there's such a shortage of drivers, we all need to be working together and helping each other out. Not elephant racing, 
not giving each other abuse, not stop the authorities stopping us just for the sake of us, for the sake of it, and slamming mass massive fines on us. Who the hell would want to come into this industry? You can go and work stacking shelves with similar money and not be bloody dragged over the coals for the tiniest little bloody thing. It's just crazy. Anyway, I said this was going to be a short vlog. I suspect it's longer than what I intended. I'm going to cut you loose now before I go on too long. Um, if anything happens down the road as far as elephant racing and that, I'll be back. But if not, hopefully I'll see you soon and um, I wish you all well. And um, maybe back before we get the camper van, but you never know. Um, maybe next year we'll be do camper van life. You never know. So all the best, you guys. Thanks for sticking with me. And so like I say, this is just a little update for you because a few of you've been asking. And oh, and just uh, a word for all those guys over the last seven months that's come up to me in services, said hello, waved to me on the road. You're more numerous than I could even remember or mention but you all know who you are and I really appreciate that and everybody else's support for the channel because it has been a bit of a useless thing at the moment for the last seven months so anyway on that bombshell I'll catch you later guys all the best to you